Today we're going to be reviewing the Mondo Llama 72 colored pencils from Target. Hope you guys like this video. We're going to swatch them and we're going to open them up and review them a little bit more. And I'll kind of show you what they look like a little bit and all that. Target put these out and they have this whole line of supplies that they've put out. And we're going to be reviewing just the colored pencils today. But I've heard similar things about some of the other supplies. One of the major problems with this line is that they do not label their colored pencils and they don't label their other supplies. So if you're looking for these supplies and you're like, oh, I'm so excited. The price point to me is a little high for not having names because usually if you don't have names, it means you're like more of a kid's art supply. But then if you're a kid's art supply, there's another issue is that they don't have the AP symbol on the back. Why is that significant? It's because that symbol shows that you're safe for kids. They don't have that yet. So I'm gonna tell you this first. You can watch the video. It's a really color palette and you'll like it as we go along, but I wouldn't buy like all the supplies and I wouldn't buy more of these if they came out. Honest opinion, <laughs> just because they don't really fall anywhere. They're not super cheap art supplies. They're kind of in the middle. They don't have color names. I'm Jenny from Jenny's Crown Collection. I help you guys find the coolest art supplies whatever project you're doing. So make sure you hit that subscribe button below so you can see all my other cool art supplies. And there's other really cool colored pencils. But you should watch this video and see what they look like. But still, there's other really cool art, art supplies out there, especially colored pencils that I have reviewed. Here is our box of 72 colored pencils from Mondo Llama. It is the brand at Target right now. So first off, I'm going to compare them to the Faber-Castell. I know these are a little bit nicer, but we're just going to kind of compare. This is, these are super good pencils. Let's look on the back. There's something I wanted to show you guys. This is nice. We have a swatch chart of all of our colors, which is always nice. The one thing I see is missing. So if you look here, you see it can it conforms to AESTMD4236. That's important. But what it's missing is a symbol. And I don't know if it's because they haven't gotten it yet. But look at that. 4236. So if you conform, not only do you conform, but you get this AP symbol and all supplies are supposed to have that now. That's probably the thing that concerns me most with this line is that they don't have that symbol because then it's like, are, am I, the supplies I'm giving my children, are they going to be okay for them? This retails for about $25. You can see make with Mondo Llama at target.com. Let's open this box. So what we have is a red tin, which is nice. And it has the name of the pencils on the red tin. And I have tape on the other side. So let's look at these pencils. First off, it's nice. They have some trays in here. They're not like the nicest trays I've seen, but they're trays. The thing that strikes me the most, look at that. What do you not see on there? color name okay for a $25 pencil set to not have names on them it's a little suspicious to me let's look at the Faber Castell so we open these these are only 36 but look they've got names they've got individual barcodes they've got the name of the pencil everything on it let's look at kind of a red to a red that core it's pretty thick it's really blunt. Do you see that? Let's look at this. You can tell these are not real wood. I'm not sure if Harbor Castle are either. The cores actually, this one looks, the Faber Castell looks a little bit bigger if you hold it in your hands, your fingers, even though it's more pointed at the top. You can see how much core is down in there, right there. You can't see it on the fabric. So let me pull out the prism color. So we'll do another red. Yeah, the core looks about the same. So there's a lot of core in there. 
Let's see if it actually holds up. What I have today is this swatch chart. It's blank and you can fill it in with whatever you want. I should just leave the name blank, but as you said, blank swatch chart and you can write what you want on here. So we are gonna go through these pencils one at a time, swatch them out, and then we'll do a blending test to see kind of where the pencils are. And you can just start calling these like, so this is R1, I would suppose. We have some red violets, so when we come to those, I'll say what they are. Okay, I'm gonna press. I mean, the color's okay. And you're able to get some R1. Now this is more red violet, I think. We'll see when we put it down. I'm just putting them in order, actually, that they came in the case. If you do decide to buy them, you'll have, you'll be able to do it the same one. So I'm going to call this RV1. But since there's no color names on them, what you could do is label them like this. Uh, and then put... labels on the actual pencil. R, V, two. So, so far it's pretty color palette. R, V, three. Now this is kind of getting, I'll just call it RV since it's like in the pink range for Now this is getting into the reds. So I feel like that would just be red with a little bit of white to it. So I'm gonna call this R2. Now that's getting into the orange. So we'll call this O1. Even though that looks like a zero. Maybe I'm calling it wrong. So that one is like a red orange. You could make up names for these if you wanted to. So we'll call that O2. And we are just gonna, I, I'm not doing any fancy swatch chart. So that's like a deeper red orange right there. Should we call it red orange? R O one. Then we'll just come, actually, maybe we'll zigzag a little bit. This is starting to get into a little yellowish, so we'll call it 03. And then this is like a peach color, which I feel like is just orange with a little bit of white, so 04. And we're getting into our yellows. And so we could call this, oh, I didn't make that very light, Y01. There's not a lot of yellows in here, so this one's basically just yellow. So you get yellow one, which is kind of hard to read. So, so pretty color palette. I 
give in there. Give credit where credit is due. Why it's you. And now we are all of a sudden in the, the greens. I feel like we might have some more yellow greens. This was kind of a drastic jump. So I would not personally put this one next to it, but it was the one that was next to it. So G1. G2. And let's see if this one, it looks like a yellow green to me. G1, which is yellow green one. I'm going to say this one's a yellow green too. Y, G2. And that way, if you do end up putting the labels on here, YG2 would really specify what kind of color it was more so. You're just looking at the labels. So this one, probably green, right? G3. That might be blue green. <laughs> that, actually, that one looks yellow green. We, we could call it yellow green. Three. Okay, so this one's G3 instead of that one. <laughs> this one's super dark. G4. So I've talked about it in other things, color theory. We have shade, tints, and tones. I have a whole video dedicated. Oh, this one's like almost yellow green. It's, yeah, it's definitely green. Green vibe. So a shade is when you add gray to it, which I don't see a lot of here. A tint is when you add white to it. So like R2 is, O4 is, G6. Then a tone. Oh, wow. That was like definitely yellow green. Y, G, four. So it's on like the more yellow scale. So I'm going to call this blue green one. I would probably sharpen these a lot more than they're, they are sharpened. I think this is just blue one. So that's a tint right there. Maybe I'm getting shade and tone mixed up. Okay, so this one looks like it has a little bit of green in it. I don't know. Should we call it? Or just blue? Two. I would not necessarily put them in these orders, but I'm just doing where they came in. So blue three. Anyway, one of those is you add gray to a color, and one of them is you add black. Okay, so that one is definitely blue grain too. And do you see how those are like the same color almost, but this has like more white in it, if that makes sense.
That one's definitely a blue. I'm, I'm wondering if we're going to have a lot of browns because we're already almost through the rainbow. We haven't even gotten through one packet yet. That one's a little bit greener, but this one's a little bit bluer. B5. This one is the one where it's like almost added black to it. See how that is? How dark it is. And this one is definitely like a blue violet right there. So called BV1. That one's almost the same, except for this one looks like it has a little darker to it. More darkness to it. BV2. And see how gray this one is. That's like almost gray. I'm gonna call that gray one. That doesn't, I know they're probably meaning for it to be like a violet something, but cause that's what they put the wrapper as. But the wrapper, I'll show you real fast. It's like, this is more, lavender or purple than this is that's more gray so we're through the first tin let's look at the second tin real fast it's very interesting so we go to the second tin all of a sudden we have some names what what's up with that that's what i i don't understand and then these ones are just called metallic but then all of their Browns, they've labeled. What's up with that? Why don't you label all of them? <laughs> That's what I don't understand. Why I only label one color? So this one's like a blue violet, also. But you can see it's on the opposite, it's, it leans more towards the violet spectrum this one's a red violet it's very close to rv3 so rv5 very close except that one's more reddish if that makes sense all right so rv I might have a lot of red violets in this set. This one just looks violet to me. See how that one looks a little bluer and this one looks a little redder. So these are a little flaky. This one definitely looks, it definitely goes towards the violet spectrum more. Okay. And then some of the browns are labeled. These browns are not. Oh, where is this? Yeah. We're just going to call this like an earth because that's how some of the places do it. Like an earth tone for the those kind of things. And while we're talking, like, I feel, oh, this might fill up the whole thing. I can't remember how much. I thought it was 70 something. But it feels like we're not going to even fill it up. That's why it's nice to have blank swatch charts, too, so you can kind of do what you want. So that one definitely looks like reddish. Then we're starting to get into some grays. 
Now that I see this one on here, I see how that one does look violet. It is very interesting how color is all relative at times. So this one just looks like a, like that one looks like it has more white in it. Okay, so G3. And our white, we won't be able to tell. I'm going to put that one as white. <laughs> and this is our black. What should we call it? I don't know what people usually call it. I always call it Theo. Maybe I should think of something better. So this is going to be an earth tone. And this one actually does have a name, I believe. Basswood. Not that we can read it. That's where it's nice to do sometimes if it is a lighter color like that. I'd do like a print or it's definitely like a peach. But what do they call it? Capiz. I don't know what that means. This one they call birch. Hmm. Huh, birch tree seems. I don't know. Oh, they actually do have a peach. That looks like a peach color. Look, we can start to read the names a little bit. This one called Teak. But if I was going to do my same scale, I would just call these all Earth Tones. But since they have names, we're using them. Which is weird. This one's called Sorrel. And they've got Wren, like a bird, I guess. This one's Terracotta. This one's Umber. And we have Bronzite. This one's a Keisha. This one's a Gate. Then we get into our metallics. So we'll just call these like M1. So look, really look metallic is my question. So also the thing with not having the symbol on there means that it might you don't know if these metallics contain actual metal, which some do. So 
So that's also good to know if you're giving these two kids. I'm going to save my critique till then. <laughs> I'm not, I'm just saying what they are, I'm not giving them a, that one does look metallic. So, M4. M5. M6. M7. M8. We're almost done. I have way more squares, so. I don't know how many you can do with this. Maybe you just want a blank spot shot. It's right here for you. This one is a little bit funny, it looks like. Oh, that was M9, right? M one zero See that one looks like that one was more violet, but it does not look as a violet. It's <laughs> it was on the pencil. Interesting. Finally we have our gold. All right, let's try some blending. We're just gonna try it at the bottom of this page right here. Let's take, white's always a good one to try. We'll take a violet and then let's try to do like a green and a blue together. Okay. So first we'll make our swatch. You can go for it more, but then we'll make this one come into this one. So yeah, I'm seeing they're blending. Am I getting like a different color? One's okay. I mean, it's not bad. Then we're gonna do our purple. This will be a real test. Let's see. Varnishes it than anything, right? Like, I don't see a big difference in the actual color. It just looks like it is more acting like a blending pencil instead. We can try this out. Um, yeah, it's like good to use, like, as a you can see how it looks a little bit more put together there. Not necessarily making it whiter or anything. So 
This is our, our blending. They do an okay job. The white acts more as like a blender as opposed to like an actual white color, I would say. My thoughts on these pencils. Okay, let's give some points here. <laughs> One, we don't have any names, so there's no points there. So you put on a disadvantage point over there. You do have some names, what not. The fact that they don't have the AP label on the back is kind of a big deal for me. Because here's the thing. If you're going for artist quality pencils, you're going to put names in your colored pencils. If you're going for kids, you don't really care. But if you're going for kids, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have that label because I'm not gonna give anything to my kids that doesn't have that label on it. That's kind of the disadvantage with that. And the color palette, you get a point for that. They don't like blend together super well, but you know, they don't look horrible together in the same sense. The white could probably cover over everything with white and it would look pretty good. But you can see there's a pretty good transition. It doesn't seem like there's color mixed together like how on especially the Derwent which is my favorite you would get a different color because the pigment I'm wondering if the pigment if there's not a, as much pigment I don't know to blend with or is good quality this is a decent set of colored pencils would I buy these if I was just looking for a set of colored pencils probably not why not because they don't have names that's a big drawback for me Mindhelic colors are pretty cool. They have a good selection of earth tones. The palette is pretty, but they would have to fix naming them and putting the AP label on the back for me to want to get more of these. I'm not really interested in getting the whole line. They have all sorts of other supplies, but until I know if they're labeled and if they have the AP line on the back, I'm not for sure I'm gonna get them. But if you do get them, or if you just want a blank swatch chart, you can click below and get this swatch chart and I'll have that up for you. And I will have a review of these pencils on my website so you can look at those. And I hope you guys have a great day and we'll see you in the next video.